The EU Emissions Trading Scheme, or ETS, is the heart of Europe's approach to tackling climate change. The ETS is an EU-wide cap and trade scheme. This means that the EU sets a limit or cap on greenhouse gas emissions, which is tightened over time in order to reduce emissions. Companies then buy and sell emissions allowances through the carbon market, each equivalent to one tonne of CO2. The less companies emit, the less they pay. So they are incentivised to pollute less and innovate more. However, the ETS is currently in crisis. The market is awash with surplus allowances as a result of the economic crisis, which has reduced industrial activity and energy use, and therefore emissions. This oversupply of allowances has led to a depressed carbon price, which has dropped from initial highs of 20 euro per tonne to as little as 6 or 7 euro. This price is thought to be too low to incentivise low carbon innovation now. More importantly, it's too low to lay the foundations for the scale of investment that will be needed for much steeper emissions reductions to 2020. Today we see an increase in the use of coal in Europe. Coal is significantly more carbon intensive than, than gas, than renewables and other low carbon technologies. The EU ETS was originally designed to reduce carbon emissions but also to incentivise investment in low carbon technologies. Industry needs certainty so that it can make those investments and today the low carbon price gives no incentive for anybody to invest in low carbon technologies. However, others diagnose the problem of the low carbon price differently. They argue that it stems not from an ineffective ETS, but rather from conflicting EU energy and climate policies. We take the view that that's actually not the underlying problem. Um, it's symptomatic of a different problem, which is that there is an overlap of climate policy and energy policy in Europe. And rather than reinforcing each other, they are competing in some ways, so that investments being driven by, for example, the Renewables Directive or the Energy Efficiency Directive, which will shortly be legally binding, are driving down the price of carbon. So things like renewables, which are low-carbon technologies, are being stimulated in bucket loads, but the other technologies, the longer ones like storage, are not being seen to. And how can we best fix that? Policymakers are currently debating whether and how to intervene and recalibrate the ETS to fix its shortcomings. The European Commission has proposed a short-term intervention to backload or delay the auctioning of 900 million allowances. They will be removed temporarily and reintroduced at a later point. The Commission has also made a number of proposals for long-term structural changes to the system in its recent carbon market report. Reactions to the proposals have diverged. Will intervention provide the right signal for investors to drive a low carbon revolution? Or are we treating the symptom rather than the disease? We need to move very, very quickly to recalibrate the emissions trading scheme. To do that, we need to make a, a, an improvement very, very quickly. Like a doctor who has a patient who's at death's door, we need to act quickly. Um, and then we can look at the long term recovery process. The European Commission has recognised the views of a number of people that the price of carbon is too low to encourage certain technologies and it is trying to do what we would regard as a, a quick fix to bring up the price of carbon very quickly. From its current level of six, seven euros a tonne, they would like to see that trebled or even quadrupled. And what they're proposing to do is to remove certain number of allowances, several hundred million tonnes worth of allowances that would come onto the market over the next three or four years, but then re-deliver them five or six years time. So what we think will happen is a spike in the price of allowances followed by a slump. Shell is calling on European policymakers to support the Commission proposals to strengthen the carbon market in the short term by backloading allowances from the third phase of the European trading scheme. We're also calling on policymakers to bring forward as soon as possible longer term structural measures for the, the long term functioning of the market. Member States and the European Parliament must now grapple with proposals for rescuing the ETS. But the fractured views amongst the business community are mirrored at political level. Will there be enough political will amongst Europe's policymakers to deliver effective reform?